In today's video, I'm doing a wood-fired pizza on the Cube Stove Outdoor Rotating Pizza Oven. Hey, this is Ricer from Dead Broke Barbecue, Wisconsin, and welcome back to the channel. But if you're new here, we try to help you enhance and amplify your backyard barbecue fun. Now, in this video, I actually stretched the dough, and they turned out pretty fantastic. So grab a dough ball and a bucket of sauce, because we're going to amplify some backyard barbecue fun. So we're gonna fire up the cube stove today and do up some Neapolitan pizzas. And I'm actually gonna just try to push that dough out and not roll it like I typically do. But remember, I'm new at this and I don't have that nine o'clock, six o'clock, nine o'clock, six o'clock thing down. But we'll still give it a try. So what am I waiting for? Let's get the cube stove fired up. Now I'm gonna light the cube stove just a little bit different today. I actually have had a few issues, and this is typical with all these little outdoor pizza ovens, where they start to dam up or build a weld of those pellets in the hopper. So we're gonna try it just to see if this will get that initial burn to start and ignite quicker. So the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and fill up the pellet hopper. Simply just take your pick hook and then dump her on in. Now I just use one grain scoop full of pellets to light the cube stove, but as it starts to burn, I'll go ahead and add another one, maybe even two. Now grab your tumbleweed and your stick lighter. Now just take your pick tool, take out your ash catch, and then light up the tumbleweed. Make sure she's burning good, and once it's burning good, just go ahead and close it up. And then just give it about 10 minutes, and then you're gonna start seeing that flame appear in the cube stove. All right, so our 10 minute timer went off, and you can see we're starting to get a decent flame coming up in here. So now I'm gonna just add a few more pellets. Now I'm using a hardwood pellet today because the last time when I did the cheese pizza test, I was using a cherry, and I could only get the cube stove up to about 750 degrees on the temperature gauge, and the stone I only got up to about 850 degrees. So we're gonna see if the actual oak, hickory, and maple blend make this thing get up to that 900 degrees. Now you're gonna to wanna to slowly feather and pour these in gently. We don't want them piling up too much. And now while it's preheating, let's go ahead and start building our first Neapolitan pizza. Now I make my own pizza dough, but the only way I was able to learn how to do it was from my good friend Jim Neidert's book, How to Make the Greatest Pizza on Earth. Jim's book will give you a starting point for every single pizza that you wanna make. In his dough recipe, it's really simple, but you can always go ahead and adjust from it, but he gives you the basics on how to make a great pizza at home. So if you're interested how to make your own greatest pizza on Earth, check the links below. Now I'm just gonna push this dough out on this peel. I'm not being too fussy and I don't have a lot of room to work with today. But we just take, spread a little bit of flour on it and then get out your dough ball. And they're gonna be a little soft, but then you just go ahead and start pushing it out. And you don't wanna push too hard because there is that good delicious gas in there. So with me being old and missing some tendons in one hand and having arthritis in the other, this isn't the easiest thing for me to do. But now the whole stretching part, it's like a nine to six, and it takes a lot of work, and I still haven't even come close to mastering it. But we just start pulling it out to nine, and then rotating it to six. And the thing is, you don't wanna really grab it, you just kinda drag a little bit, and you'll feel it stretch. Now once I get to this point where it's kinda stretching, and I don't want it to break or really separate, I just kinda go ahead and just push out the edges a little bit. Now remember, no comments below that how bad I'm doing. If you wanna come over here and join me and start tossing the dough for me, I'll put you on film. And another reason why I'm using the pizza peel, it's a good reference point of how big it has to be to fit in there. Throw a little bit more flour on there, just so we can make sure it comes off the peel when we put it in the cube stove. And this pizza I'm making, it's my wife's favorite. She likes just a little bit of sauce. We get the sauce on there and we just start spinning it out towards the edges. Now next I'm just using some fresh mozzarella for the cheese. So it's gonna be very similar to a margarita pizza, but it doesn't have all the crushed tomato on it or the slices of tomato. So you just kinda start peeling some little chunks off and we just start dobbing them on there because you don't need a lot of them and you don't want them too big because if they're too big, they don't really cook all the way through. So just little chunks, kind of like this. 
you know, nothing fancy. And we'll just kind of finish this one up right there. And finally, I'm just gonna go ahead and throw some fresh basil leaves on. These are pretty big, but we'll break them down. And I just throw them out, nothing fancy. And it's just really typically this, I do it for her because it's more about the flavor. I do try to even it out a little bit though. Now our pizza oven is running right around 750 degrees. Now let's go ahead and just check out our stone temp. Yeah, 850, Let's see up here in the front end. Oh, she's pretty, eh, 600 and some. We'll just go ahead and rotate it a half a turn. And then we'll put on the lid and just give it a couple more seconds to heat up. And we'll just dust off our cutting board real quick. And you can see that your working area, it's gonna get a little bit of extra flour all over, but they don't hurt nothing. Go ahead and take off our lid. And you're gonna wanna shake this thing to make sure that it's free. And we'll just get back in here and get this pizza in. Put on the lid and we're gonna cook this for about two minutes. Just sit here and rotate it. Now this knob, it's warm, but you can still handle it. We'll open it up and just check real quick. All right, our crust is starting to rise a little bit and you don't have to turn it quick. Okay, here's another 30. Let's just take a look. Oh yeah, starting to rise up. Looking good, the cheese is starting to melt a little bit. Here's another 30 seconds. Starting to turn a little golden on the outside. That's looking good. And you can check through the glass, but it is really hard to see. And it also helps to go ahead and clean off the glass after each pizza. Okay, we're rolling in on our two minutes. I think we're just gonna let her cook a little bit back on this side for just a little bit longer, but she's starting to look okay. Now you're gonna wanna use your metal pizza peel. And voila. Here we are. Put our lid back on, and then we'll cut this one up and we'll see what we end up with. Well, she's nice and crispy, that's for sure. And you guys know me, I like it crispy. And this isn't the prettiest Neapolitan in the world, but hey, we're just cooking it at home and we're just eating. All right, so here's our crust. Looks pretty decent. This is looking okay on this part but right here is where I like it. That's exactly how I want this crust to look every time. So here we go, let's give it a taste test. Very good. I really like the fresh mozzarella on there. And you don't need a lot of it. And that fresh basil just gives it an extra little zip to the pizza. But this is really good and you can tell that it's really simple to make a pizza on this. But before we make our next one, let's go ahead and fill up the pellet hopper. Open it up and just dump in another scoop. Take some time and clean off our cutting board. And don't forget to clean off the pizza cutter. So now you just repeat the process and you can do this as long as you keep this thing running, you can make pizza. Get out another fresh dough ball. Get a little bit of flour on it. And we'll just push this one out too. Just use the pads of your fingers. That's the best way to do it. And then start doing the nine to six. And the dough almost kind of talks to you and tells you, hey, I'm gonna break, so be careful. You'll kind of feel it. Again, I don't have quick enough hands to be able to flop it as fast as the real pros do. You'll get better at it as you go. And I like to flip it over to make sure that it's getting some more flour on both sides. Cause if it starts feeling a little sticky, just add a little bit of flour to it. Now this one didn't get quite as round as the other one, but we can kind of work with it a little bit. And if you're interested in learning how I make my dough balls, leave a comment below and I'll do a video of just making the dough itself. It certainly is not as intimidating as what people think it is. We're gonna have a rectangle pizza here. I didn't turn it to six quick enough. Now one thing that I'm hoping that the cube stove changes is that they get a longer hook because as you start running this, the pellets, they will start to kind of weld up in the channel. So I want to take something long enough to push it down so we get that consistent flame. So if you look through the glass and you start seeing your flame dying down, most likely you're out of pellets. Or a second thing is that you're gonna have to go ahead and poke those pellets just a little bit because you want them burning right on top of the grate. All right, so this crust is gonna be good enough. We're gonna use this. But before I load her up, I wanna put just a little bit more flour on the bottom so I can make sure I get it off the peel. And I like to give her a little bit of spin on there to give it a little bit of texture on the bottom of it so it slides off easier. So we're just gonna start with the sauce again, and this is one of my favorite pizzas. And then we'll just start spinning it out. Get her out to the edges. 
Yeah, we'll call this good. This is pretty decent right here. Now we'll just start adding our fresh mots. And chunks like this is probably better. Keep them a little longer and thinner, if that makes any sense. Not a great big old blob with that one right there. Oof, ah, that looks good. And for good measure, let's just put one little chunk right there and move this one over. But on mine, I want some sausage. And I made up a little sausage recipe and that's in Jim's book also. But you're gonna wanna make sure when you're dealing with the meat to make them thin also. Don't make a meatball, just kinda put it out like that. Cause you wanna make sure that it cooks straight through. Get another one there. Ooh, that's a big one. That's a little better right there. That's a little better size. Get one little one right there and one right here. Now I'm just gonna check my temperature and I'm still running at that 750 degrees so I'm sure my stone is fine. But I am gonna turn the stone a half a turn so it gets a little bit of chance to heat up that backside a little more. And to make sure that it gets off the peel, I'll throw a little bit of flour on there just to make sure because I don't want it getting stuck and falling off on the tray in there. But again, just get her to dance on the board and then you can go ahead and get her in. Get her back in there. And ooh, we went a little deep on that one. As it starts to cook, we'll adjust that. But start turning it and set your timer for 30 seconds and then check again. Okay, so it's been about 30 seconds and we're just gonna try to get this back up on the stone. There we go, just adjust a little bit. We'll put our lid back on. Keep on turning. Because if you turn it too far in the back, you're gonna hit that deflector if it's hanging off the stone. Okay, it's been 30 seconds, let's check it. Yeah, she's doing pretty good. Starting to bubble a little bit. Keep her turning. And it always helps to have a timer so you make sure you're checking. Yeah, she's starting to crisp up a little bit on us, that's good. But we got a ways to go. Looks a little more done on this one side. Right here needs a little bit more, so we'll kind of get it to that point and we're gonna let her sit just for a second or two. Now typically I wouldn't be showing you and taking the lid off and leaving it off that long if I wasn't filming, but I'm trying to give you a little bit of a visual also. So we're at our minute and a half. Oh yeah, cheese is all melted. We just want that sausage to cook up a little bit more. Okay, there's our two minutes. Take the lid off and we'll check it. Just wanna adjust it a little bit, see, oh yeah. Now I got some advice from a viewer that they said they kind of pick it up towards the top and that'll help crisp up those toppings. So we'll just hold it there for a little second because obviously heat rises. All right, I think it helped a little. I'll grab my pizza cutter. Nice and crispy crust again. And we're gonna have some odd shaped slices, but Eh, it's just eating at home. All right, let's check our crust. Oh yeah, that's looking really nice. Good cheetah print there. It stands at attention. So let's take a bite. Really good. Mm, very happy with this one. And don't forget to bite the sausage too. The sausage is cooked all the way through. It's very good. It's perfect actually. The crust is really crispy and I'm really happy the way it turned out. Take a look at that bottom. If <laughs> that isn't awesome, I don't know. And it's key that I'm running it for about two minutes in my opinion at that 750 degrees. I have not yet been able to get the cube stove up to 1000 degrees and today I thought with these pellets I might get a little hotter. But the pellets that I used on that first assembly video were all oak and I think that's why I was able to achieve that higher temperature. Plus it was like 40 degrees that day. But it's pushing like 70 degrees today and that's what we would call around here Indian summer or harvest summer or November summer? But it certainly has a great flavor and I'm really impressed to how well the cube stove works. Sorry that I'm eating on camera, but that's part of the business, right? YouTube cooking channel, you gotta eat. The sausage is trying to run away from you. You're not gonna escape this mouth, piece of sausage. He's running out of real estate. I'm gonna get him this time. Mm. But if you're interested in the cube stove, check the links below because they're part of a Kickstarter campaign and there's only a few days left. 
I think it ends on November 21st. So make sure you head over there right now so you can get your very own cube stove and learn how to make some outdoor backyard pizza like I am. Your family and friends are gonna thank you for it. Trust me. Oh yeah, hands down to date, this is by far the two best pizzas I've cooked on the cube stove. It's only gonna get better. Now one thing that I forgot to tell you during this video is that it really didn't matter if I lit the cube stove from the ashtray or from the back end. I think the results are about the same both ways. It just takes a little time for it to actually start to develop a flame. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and become a subscriber. Turn on that notification bell because you don't want to miss my next video. But I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next video. I got 10 dough balls, so I'm gonna make a couple par bakes also, but. When the moon hits the eye like a big pizza pie that's amore. Nah, it's way easier to push them out on the cutting board than the peel, but I did that just for people to have a reference. Because if the new people start getting them, they don't really know, you know. <laughs> Make sure that they can fit in the cooker. No, oh, I'm still recording.